When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it's 100%. It's not 30% Lord and 100% Savior. No, no. It's 100% Savior. 100% Lord. And God is giving us assurance. The Bible, God has made Jesus whom you crucify. And we are part of it. We are part of why Jesus was crucified. Because of our sin. We are all sinners prior to this. We, we are not righteous prior to knowing God and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So let me just give you some story in parable of the ten minas. And this will be, uh, can be seen in chapter 19, verse 11 to 27. And uh, it goes like this. And while they were listening to this, he went to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. And he said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas, put this money to work. He said, until I come back. And so what happened is, one that was given 10, he gave it 10, and so he was rewarded with 10 more cities. The one that was given 5, were rewarded with 5 more cities because he's, faithful, he's a faithful child. But the one who did not, anything, did not do anything with his talent that God has given him, God took it away and said, you unfaithful child. So all of us in the New Beginning Church, whether my church, your church, this is a church of God, we were all given a talent. And there were instructions for us. We came to know the Lord, but we do not have to stop just knowing the Lord, reading the Bible, attending the fellowship. We have to preach the gospel. And we don't have to stop preaching the gospel because we have to make a disciple of all nations. And that was just amazing, you know, when these are the, the words that when I came to know the Lord, way back December 1st, 1980. And after six months, I went on a mission field. And I preached, to, you know, the Philippines has about 300 languages. You drive from here to, to Oxnard, they speak another language that we don't understand. That's how it is. And so, but, you know, I went there, you, I preached the gospel. I was 20. He, uh, one years old at the time, and, and I preached with the principal, I preached with the teachers, but what a nerve. I'm not even, I'm not even a veterinarian at the time, I'm not professional, but I preached the gospel. And God, and after that, God gave me an opportunity to be in the United States. This is, by the way, this is my 15 years with the family, but way back in 1985 to 91, we started the church. But this is a, a denomination with the, with the four square. Our brothers, you know. In, and so we started a church. And it grew. And then I said, the Lord is calling me back to the Philippines. We went, the whole family went back. We started a new life again in the Philippines. But then God gave me an opportunity. I was, I was assigned and I got connected with Children International of Kansas City, Missouri. And I used that position, helping children in the remote or poverty-stricken area to preach the gospel. And true enough, I don't even know what would happen. All I have to do is to preach the gospel to them. And when you know what happened? Church was built. And now, and after that, I, I have to find a, a pastor that should replace me and uh, it, it's, it's been continued. And later on, I will show you the significance of that 1,000. There are 2,000 2, members right now. We started with a place bigger than, big, this is big, about this big. From that point to this point, that would accommodate only 30 people. Imagine, this would be 30 people. But then, eventually, it became like that. So, I don't even know what's going on. And I, there was a time that we started to preach the gospel in, in a certain province that about four hours drive. 
So what do we do then? You got to drive four hours to preach the gospel. And so my role is to support them one, month, one day a month. But I have to drive to 2 p.m. at night, be there at uh, 6, prepare, the, prepare everything, and preach the gospel, and go home at 1 o'clock, and I'll be in Manila at 5, 5, 5 p.m. and go back to work the following day. But that became a church. And I don't even know how. It is the work of God. Amen. All I have to do is to obey. This is all I know. I am not, I, have, I do not have a theological background. I don't have a doctor of divinity. I don't even have a doctor, uh, master of theology. All I have is doctor of veterinary medicine. <laughs> I have a master in animal breeding, uh, animal husbandry, breeding, and genetics. <laughs> I have a, a license at the Florida as a registered veterinary dental technician. I have a license in California as veterinary, registered veterinary technician, and also as a registered nurse. So where is the theology there? I'm not very good in theology. I'm not good in whatever preaching about, or I cannot argue, but what, oh, there's one thing that I know of. I have to preach the gospel in season and out of season. And that is in obedience with the word. Take a look. Jesus, our master, has gone away and left us a charge of his work. So the master, Jesus Christ, called us ten, his, ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minus and said to them, do business till I come. What is God saying to us? This is how simple it is. The Lord will be back and we will be accountable. And what he's saying to New Beginning Church in Simi Valley and New Beginning Church in, in Glendale, hey, you preach the gospel till I come. Make a disciple of all nations till I come. That, that's our that's the role. We were entrusted. And that is what we call accountability. We will be accountable at a certain point. There are two certain things in life. One is, the Lord is coming. And second, or we will be coming to the Lord. <laughs> Nobody can argue that. We will be going to, and we will be held accountable. Hey, what did you do in the Simi Valley uh, New, Church, uh, New Beginning Church? What did you do? So Jesus is coming back to do his business till he come. And this means a time limit on our work for the Lord because the Lord will come again. And I wish sometimes, you know, in my prostration, Lord, come right now. <laughs> people, <laughs> people are not listening. People are, you know, and I'm part of it too. You know, sometimes I have a, hard-headed uh, heart. and So, yes, Jesus has given us, do you agree that Jesus has given us, all of you, all of us, including me, a talent? I made it, I have a limitation. I cannot express myself in English very well. That's why I preach in Tagalog, and this is my first time to preach in English. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> All I have to do when I was invited by Dr. Clark is to obey. Obey the word. Obey not only the bishop, but obey the Lord. That I have to preach the gospel in season, out of season. Whether my accent is good or not, I don't care. But I have to preach the gospel. So and that's our responsibility. Because God has give, uh, given all of us the ability and the talent to be used for the kingdom of God. And so the talent, what the, what, the, what, the, uh, what the Lord is saying is, be working. He didn't say what to do. Just be working. Be diligent, be faithful, and be ready until the coming of the Lord. Or be ready until we come to the Lord in our time. Okay, so praise God. And another thing. He, the master wanted his servant to work in his place while he was gone. Occupy till I come. So in place of him, to be accountable to him, to please him, and to, to increase his kingdom. 
Because this is my principle, my dear brothers and sisters. If the Lord, if He's not the Lord of all your money, then He is not a Lord of all. Because we have the tendency to, to think that when we have given our 10% to the, to the Lord, then the 90% is ours. No, it, the 90% belongs to the Lord. When you buy shoes, when you buy your Colgate, to, that glorifies God. But when we cannot use that for the evil purposes, we have to use that 90% for the glory of God. So eventually, in reality, it's 100% of all our money belongs to God. It's not ours. Yes, we have given a part for God, but the 90% belongs to God, and it must be used for the glory of God because if it's not the Lord of your money, then He's not the Lord of all. If He's not the Lord of our talent, He's not the Lord of all. Take a look. How many of the best singer of all time in Hollywood that started well in the church. You name it, Ray Charles, Whitney Houston. It's a good thing, Aretha Franklin, Aretha Franklin started well, he started in the church and ended, not ended, but he's still, she's still serving. Uh, she's continually serving the church. There was an occasion where the testimony of Reverend Al Green, remember? He's, he's from a church, he's from a choir, he has a very good voice, but then because of the calling of the world, he became famous and he lived a demonic life according to him, you know, when I, when I heard his testimony, but then he came to realize that his talent belongs to God. And so now he's called Reverend Al Green. Praise the Lord for that. But how many died not in the hands of God? But they started well in a church, in a choir. Take a look. So if God, if the Lord is, if He's not the Lord of your talent, then He's not the Lord of all. So we must be careful on that, that we are not selective in the Word. This is how we are. Oh, I, this is my favorite verse. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know it not. Wow, that's good. But have you discipled anybody? Have you made a follow-up? Have you preached the gospel? That's another thing. Yes, we become, sometimes we become selective. Oh, I love this verse. All the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's a very good verse. But we have the tendency to be selective. When we have to follow the word of God, it must be 100%. Amen. Yeah? Because if He's not the Lord of our time, our talent, then He is not the Lord of all. And if He's not the Lord of all, of all aspects of our life, then He is not Lord at all. That's why there was a challenge. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Why do you call me Lord, Lord? But do not do what I say. Oh, that's a very good point, isn't it? Yes, yes, Lord. That's why when I share the gospel, this is the first thing I say. Yes, uh, okay. Just for this week alone, we have a that video conference through Messenger and something with Zoom. Two groups in Australia that needed help because they know that I'm from you know, on chemotherapy, on, on hematology, oncology department. And I, we have a friend, a lot younger than us. And they have both the husband and the wife has a cancer. They were far together. I cannot make them follow up, but I could encourage them. So when I told them, yes, we will call our father, but make sure that we are a son and daughter of God. So that we may be able to call father, Abba. And as a, as in, in if the relationship, if there is a relationship that exists, ask and it shall be done unto you. So I always started with the gospel of the ABC of salvation. Before I, you know, be, before I help my patient pray, I have to start because the gospel, 
Because this is my point. I've seen a lot of miracles, even from other churches. I've seen one boy who has a vertical, who cannot see without the eyeglass. And mother's bragging me about, hey, you know what? This, this, my, 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 this young boy of mine, he, I brought him to Eddie Billion Reva. You know, it's a, Jesus is a, this is his Lord movement. And he was completely healed. But then after that, what happened? Nothing. The mother does not accept the Lord. The boy does not accept him. There was healing. And I was a witness. Because I know the boy who has a very thick glass and could not see better. But now he could see without eyeglass. There is a miracle. But they stop there. They must continue. This is what they're supposed to do. They must continue. Worshiping God, serving God, and they themselves should preach the gospel to other people and to the last. Isn't it? What is the point of healing? He could have an eyesight. He could believe 150 years old. But... Without salvation. Yeah. Without salvation. It's pointless. He will die and go to hell. Yes, he was healed. Yes, life was extended. But the most important thing is the eternal life of the people. So as a church, we must have the passion to serve God, to preach the gospel and to, to in season and out of season and to to make every believer a leader in the church to preach the gospel to the next generation. That is the point. Because we don't have to stop and we should not stop. This is what, this is what's happening to us. This is how we are in a church. Maybe it doesn't happen in the new beginning church. This is how we are. Hey, I'm already a Christian. Yes, what happened? I'm now reading the Bible. That's good. What's next? Oh, I'm just reading the Bible. Oh, I'm worshiping God. I mean, you know what? I attended the worship service at New Beginning Church. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Were you blessed? I'm so blessed with the message. Oh, next, what happened? You stop. We have to continue. So now the, there was a vacuum. We have to prepare the church. The church has to prepare for the next generation. Because what about if we're all not here? Where is the next generation? Thank God I was happy seeing this family, the millennials, and the next generation, the third generation. Wow, praise God. Continue serving God. Do not stop. Do not stop. You will become a leader. We are preparing, you know, even, even at a young age. Because New Beginning Church in, C in Glendale is just a five-year-old church. We started with seven people way five years ago. It become 18, and then we look for a room at the United Community Church. And then it grew into 40, it grew to 80, it grew to 100, and then COVID comes. Now we're back to 40. <laughs> but we are preparing and still. The message remains the same. And in, in, in the Church of God said, we will not go back to the, to the normal. We will go back from scratch. So we started all over again. We have to make a disciple. We have to preach the gospel. Just like what you're doing. But we needed the next generation. You see, I'm so happy seeing you, you know, even at the, uh, at the prayer room. I'm so happy seeing the next generation because this, we, is this, uh, these are the people that will continue preaching the gospel. I'm... <laughs> You may not believe it, I'm already a senior. I'm 65, 63 years old. I'll be retiring in two years' time as a registered nurse. But is there a such thing as retirement as a preacher? Or? No, 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 no. As a Christian, there's no such thing as reti retirement. Even in your deathbed, you could preach the gospel to the nurses and to the doctors. <laughs> so do not stop. What's happening to the church is we stop at a certain point. Yes, we came to know the Lord. Yes, we pray. Yes, we, yes, we leave the, read, uh, uh, read the Bible. Yes, we have a cell group. Yes, we worship. But then we stop. You must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You must make a disciple of all nations. And that is the ultimate goal. And then those who came to know the Lord build up 
build him, build them up, disciple them, and and make them the leader of the next generation to come. You're going to be the leader of this church in the future. You're going to be the next leader of them. And that is a prophecy. And that is what God wanted us to do. So this is, take a look. I'm attending cell. Yes. So what? Well, I'm attending a cell group because I love God. I'd like to win people for Christ, for God, and make them disciple. We have to continue. We don't have to stop. And my disciple will lead the next generation cell group. That should be our attitude because that is the message of God that wants us to do. Amen. Prepare, Simi Bali, New Beginning Church, prepare the next generation. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. Whether it's raining in California, it's not raining, it's sunny in California, we have to preach the gospel. And not only to preach the gospel, but to make a disciple of this new generation. This is how it works. Take a look. You who are cell group leaders now, the goal is not just to have a Bible study. Yes, we have a Bible study. Thank God. Thank God for that. But as a leader, as a cell group leader, the goal is for your group to share the gospel to the third generation. Look at the people outside. That is the multiplication process. And at a certain point, you will see when you encourage them, build them up, train them to be a leader because this is what we believe, that every believer must be a leader and will become a leader in the future. So this will be the third generation. Take a look. From that one cell group, you could have probably six members in the cell group, but that six members will share the gospel and they will build up another six. No, the number is insignificant. Whether it's one or that's 12 or 15, it doesn't matter. All we have to do is to build up the next generation. Otherwise, what would happen? The church will die. Take a look at the statistics. And this is what I've learned way back, you know, 35 years ago. Let's uh, look at the church, the history of the church. On the first five years, we are on fire, just like the new beginning church. We are on fire. But then at the age of 18, you already have a choir, you already have the instrument, you have bought the property, and then the passion dies down. And it, and it becomes a plateau. But we cannot maintain a church. We must either have to go up or the church will die. You take a look at those churches in the 1940s. Thank God for them because, because of them, we are here. But if they don't, if the church doesn't continue preaching the gospel, there will be a plateau at the age of 40, the church starts to die. And it's unfortunate. In my first time in America in 1985, I look at the huge church in wheelchair building, left and right. That could cater to the, hey, this is our story. We used to have 10,000 people. Where are they now? It's sad. And I've seen, you know, when I came back 15 years ago, I saw the same church, and now it says, for sale. Oh, that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. Why? Because we did not continue to see the next generation we have to look at the next generation. We have to preach the gospel. Until probably it's a good thing to see the fourth generation too. And that's how it is. And the, the video or the picture that I've shown you with 1,200 people for two, two services, they have around 2,000 people. It all started with this. We started... 30 people on a 50 square foot. That's about maybe 500, oh, 500 square feet. This, uh, we, because we, we measure by, by, by meters. It's, uh, it's about, uh, I think, less than 50 square meters. So that's about 500 square foot that will fit in 30 people. And then we found a place. And this, this is all the amenities we have. Tent. 
If it rains, that's your problem. If it's too hot, that's your problem. This, it's not cemented. It's, it's filled with dust. So when you wear a black shoes, you go out with a different color, gray. No amenities. But with or without amenities, we have to preach the gospel. Because we don't know what's, what's going to happen. That's the trust. That's the Lord. Lord, I trust you. All I have to do is to preach the gospel and you have to take care of these people that I preach the gospel to. Hey, and a and, and lot of people even accusing or how do you call it? Going, uh, accusing me of, hey, what, what's right to have to preach the gospel and even a pastor? Hey, let me tell you. <laughs> if the pastor is the, the pastor of the sheep. It's, it's the sheep that gives birth. Remember that. The pastor takes care of you, but it's you because pastor can only preach one uh, at a time. There's only one pastor, but there could be hundreds of people that can share the gospel wherever you are. In your workplace, in your school, in anywhere you, any, you're in your neighborhood, there could be hundreds of people. You could reach more than the pastor. But there are people in the old school who say, hey, it's only the pastor that should preach the gospel. No, no, no. If the Lord is your Lord, it must be 100% that you follow the word of God to preach the gospel in season and out of season. Do you agree with that? And, and train up. So this become the church that uh, we started with tents. And, and even, I, I, I've, I just don't have the picture right now, but it, we all started from scratch, from nothing. We did not inherit the church. And I'm, I'm not even a pastor. So that's why I was called on, you know, the dean of uh, International School of Theology in the Philippines. And said, my, one of the pastors said, Lester, my, my, our dean would like to talk to you. If you come back to the Philippines, please have time to. And so I was interviewed. They said, why are you giving? You preach the gospel. There was a church. You build a church. Why are you giving it to somebody else? I said, I cannot be a pastor. I can start the church. But I, cannot, I, don't, I don't have the nerve to be a pastor. That's why I have to find. And the one that I found, he said, Lester, I have a master's degree in church planting, but I have never planted a church. So that's the irony. I am not a theologian. I don't have a master's degree, but I planted three churches in the Philippines from scratch. And then there comes the, so I think, he said, well, this is how we are, we are called. We don't have to be, we don't have, it's nice to have a doctorate degree. I love that. But we, but that would not prevent me from preaching the gospel. You may not have a doctorate degree in theology or whatever in divinity, but that will not prevent you from preaching the gospel. Oh, oh, I found one, another picture. This is a picture. Look at the tent. Started with the tent. If it rains, it pours. You know how in the Philippines, in America, in California, oh, there was a typhoon. And uh, people from the Philippines said, uh, where is the typhoon? <laughs> These are drizzle. Said a typhoon. When we have a typhoon, it goes, the flood goes to your second floor of your house. If you're not on the roof, that's not a typhoon. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, 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 even, even at that place, that is what uh, the one telling you about, that it's about four hours away from Manila. Maybe four and a half. You know, and uh, you drive, it's a sacrifice. I drive at 2 o'clock, and then I come there. And then until such time, the, pa the pastor over there told me, Lester, please don't come at night again because there is a fight between the Communist Party and the government. And if you drive and you, because while driving after two hours because of, you know, tiredness, because I, I, st I sometimes sleep in the car, but then don't do that because it's very risky. The new people's army will think that you're informer. And the soldiers, the military will think that you're also informer from the other side. So either way, you lose. <laughs> so, but that not deter us me from 
preaching the gospel. So well, I have, if I have to come the day before, I have to come. Preaching of the gospel must be continued and must be still in my heart. Whether there is a fight between the communists and the military, it will not deter because we have to preach the gospel in season and out of season. So, with a new beginning, church, this is what God is telling us, that I am sure of this, that He, the Lord, who began a good work in your life, will bring it to the completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that we, that the Lord, that, will, will, that we were able to present you the new beginning church to the Lord. Look at the church. They're faithful to you. They have 100% given their lordship to you. We're not just a church goer who goes to the church on Sunday and go home at night. At... No. This is a church. This is our, the desire of your pastor, Dr. Cliff. This is the desire of our bishop, Sean. This is the, my desire is to bring the churches to the Lord. Lord, this is our church. We have done well. We've been faithful to you. We have 100%. Lord, giving our tithes and offering and our time and talents, it's 100%. That is the, the goal. He, and this is what we also believe, that he who began a good work in you shall be able to continue until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, you don't have, it's nice to be a doctor. It's nice to be, to have a degree. But it's the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit that would open up your mouth. It is the Holy Spirit that will dwell in every word that you would say. It is the Holy Spirit that will open up the heart of the people that she is sharing the gospel with. It is not you. It is your, we are all just instrument of God. So believe. Believe on the Lord. Trust. Because that's all we needed. And thank God for new beginning church, Simi Bali, because you're spirit-filled. But don't stop there. You're all spirit-filled. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. Use it for the glory of God. Amen. Oh, Lord. Let us all stand because I don't want to be carried away. <laughs> Let's all stand. And, all, and uh, oh God, thank you, Lord. We thank you. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a workers of God, I'd like to make sure that every word that I say doesn't have any flattery. It must come from my heart. And uh, I'm so blessed with you. From the time that I came in, somebody prayed for Somebody prayed for me here. Oh, that's amazing. I think, you know, I've learned something from you that I have to share it with the New Beginning Church too in Glendale. You're so, such a blessing. And the Church of God really, you know, when we started, we are not, we do not belong to the Church of God denomination. I am a, I am a licensed minister, assistant minister of the Four Square Gospel. But then I, I told my pastor, I think there's a people that in need of a guidance. And I have accepted the bill. But I told them a year ahead of time. And this is the new beginning church, Church of God in Glendale. And this is the first time that I accepted the responsibility as a pastor. I've never been a pastor. I'm only on the sideline. Because that's what I believe. But if God can use doctrine, Bishop Sean, if God can use Dr. Clark, God can use Lester Kehano too. God can use each and every one of us. If they can do it, you can do it. Let us all pray, Lord. We're just so excited, oh Lord, for what you're about to do in our life, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to be with my brothers and sisters here, Lord, at Simi Bali. Thank you, Father, for our leadership, the vision of Dr. Sean, the Bishop Tim Hills, oh God, the Bishop Dr. Clark. Thank you, Father. Their vision, Lord, is that every member will become a cell group leader. That every member shall preach the gospel in season and out of season. That every member, Lord, will make a disciples, disciples in obedience to your word. 
And that is the vision, Lord. That we may be able to preach the gospel. Wherever it is, oh God, Lord, I lift to you, Lord. My brothers and sisters at New Beginning Church and Simi Valley, Lord, this is my prayer. That when time comes, that we're going to be with you, or you're coming in, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you will tell us, Lord, well done, my faithful child. You did your best New Beginning Church. And come in peace in the name of Jesus. God bless New Beginning Church. Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Lester, for that. Wow. I feel super charged up on Was that at a revival or a Sunday service? I was like, whoa. Um, again, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who was watching online to hear the special word. And so, as always, we're going to have people available. So the prayer team, please come out. If you, especially if you were touched, if you want to give your life to Christ, if you just want to rededicate yourself to Christ, if you feel like you need to do more, right? Because we've just been sitting, but now we want to go to that next level. Please come up. We would love to pray for you and be available. So, all right. Well, God bless you guys. We hope to see you Thursday. And if not, hopefully next Sunday. All right. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Be blessed.